Oh, hello there. Welcome to another BBC broadcast. I'm Professor Wallace Beasley. I will be your host this evening. I'm an expert in medieval history and literature. And I am Professor Arthur Banks, this show's co-host. I also happen to be an expert in- Fascinating, Arthur. I wasn't What do you know about the theater? Are you asking me or- Ho ho ho, and that's where you're wrong, Mr. Banks. You're very, very wrong. As an educated professor, with over 12 degrees in the middle of history- 12 degrees? How is that possible? It will be my job to explain to you the characteristics of medieval theater in a sophisticated and professional manner. Gee, we're off to a great start already, aren't we? Now, Mr. Arthur, would you care to explain to me where we are right now? What? Uh, if you insist? We are currently in the studio back lot, filming a dark. Oh, Arthur, you miserable soul. We're now currently in the year 1066. You've gone quite mad. You've broken the laws of time and spice. Bring us back now. No, you're going to be staying with me now. This is a bloody kidnapping. You are no longer a kid, Arthur. Please, there's a difference. This is simply a hostage situation. Help! Hi, Billy Mays here for the Jupiter Jack. Instead of hearing music, you hear this. Hi, Billy Mays here for the Jupiter Jack. Oh boy, commercial. Great. We really had to cram in that extra ad revenue, didn't we? Shouldn't we actually start this thing? A lovely idea, Arthur. In order to understand the theatre of the Middle Ages, one of them understand the theatre of the Greeks and Romans. Ancient Greek plays were mainly held at government-funded festivals, most famously City Dionysa, a celebration to the wine god Dionysus. I know, I'm definitely going to need some wine by the time this is over. The Greeks are most famous for the tragic plays, such as Oedipus Rex, a story about a man who murders his father and marries his mother. Charming. Then, the Roman Empire was formed. The plays did do tragedies occasionally, but the primary focus was on comedy, which was inspired by the segment of Greek comedy called New Comedy. All caught up? Yes. Good. Now forget everything you know, because the Roman Empire just collapsed. <laughs> Theta had essentially been killed. Now, traces of theatrical activity did exist in the early Middle Ages, with jugglers, mimes, and minstrels. But besides this, Theta had to be reborn. What is that noise in there? Elements of theatre appeared in the church, which ironically suppressed theatre several hundred years earlier. There were segments where choir members would chant out lines of the Bible, gradually this evolved into short dramas known as liturgical dramas. I see. What are you doing now? Oh, I was told if I paid money for an indulgence, I can buy my way out of hell instead of being a devout Catholic. Because, uh, we all know where I'm going. <laughs> I told that ungrateful boy if he didn't get a job, there would be consequences. But no, instead he runs to the police and he. Oh, you're all back. Lovely. I was just informing Professor Banks about my wonderful past and how I loved my family very, very much. Please, just take me away from him, please. I, I can pay you. Just, I don't want to be, I don't want to be near this maniac anymore, please. Would you like to go into town square? Oh, I, I would really rather we not. Splendid, Arthur. Glad you agree. Do you know what this is? No. These are vernacular plays. Unlike the liturgical dramas developed by the church, the language of the people was used, and not Latin. These plays were far more elaborate than the liturgical dramas. Now, they still focus on biblical stories, but they were performed in town square, rather than inside of a church. These plays focused heavily on the three M's. What are the three M's? <laughs> oh, Arthur. Please don't touch me. The three M's were the types of plays that were popular in this era. The first M stands for miracle plays, such as the lives of the saints. The second is for morality plays, such as the play called The Everyman, was taught to listen to the audience using religious themes and religious character to convey a moral message. And the third 
is a mystery play. This would usually focus on Jesus Christ. What were these plays like? An excellent question, Arthur. I'll explain them to you. Hey, look, we're in Gettysburg now. I thought we were in the Middle Ages! I don't know. It's about as consistent as the place of the time. And look, now we're back. Mystery plays would often mention events that had not happened yet. For example, in the Second Shepherd's play, which, mind you, takes place before the birth of Jesus Christ, the Cantors would mention Jesus Christ and the Virgin Mary, even though those events have not happened yet in the context of the play. Oh, so about as historically accurate as a Mel Gibson movie. The tone was all over the place. A primary example of this is, in once again, the Second Shepherd's play. The first half of this play can be considered a comedy, because of the antics with Mac, a fellow shepherd who steals a lamb. The other shepherds, after realizing this, go to Mac's house. Mac, thinking quickly, disguises the lamb as a baby, and asks his wife to give birth to it. Uh, oh, hilarious. However, the second half of this play takes a strange turn. The shepherds encounter an angel, who tells them Christ has been born, and they go to the aftermath of the birth. A comedy suddenly becomes a serious drama. Interesting. Yes. Now let us address the guild parade. That was a requirement for this project, wasn't it? Now the guild parades were truly a marvel for this time period. These would be transportable stages that would parade through town. Now these are very elaborate for the time, including many pieces of machinery to work on the stage. These guild parades would have a very large cast. Of course no women were allowed. These parades would be cycle plays, and they can last up to 40 days. These parades, of course, performed the three M's, such as the morality, which taught lessons to the audience. Kind of like how this is a lesson, that these stop-motion projects are very poorly made, and we'll regret making them a year from now. Stop-motion didn't exist in medieval times. Well, just like the plays of the time, they would reference things that didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I will leave you stranded here if you embarrass me again. Now take a look at all this machinery. Truly a marvel. This machinery was mainly used to portray flying characters, such as angels. And look, even props. So, although very different from plays of the day, medieval plays had a lot in common with other forms of theater. Whether it was performed well is up to you. Now, Arthur, I'm going to stab you with this. What? Relax, Arthur. I'm giving a demonstration for the audience. I want them to understand how on-stage death was portrayed in the Middle Ages versus the Roman times. This isn't real. If I wanted to kill you, <laughs> believe me, I could have done it already. Oh, gee, that's comforting to know. Now, can we please go back home? Hasn't this abominable trip lasted long enough already? In all due time, Arthur. In all due time. All right. Ready? Ready. Here it goes. Oh, oh God. Uh, Arthur, I'm... I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was a real sword. I may have gone too far in a few places.